as it was pointed out, I was uh, pretty much uh, uh, pretty hardcore during my 20s. I was uh, into opiates in a big way. Um, I started taking opiates when I was 17. I had just arrived in Berkeley, California. <laughs> uh, it was the late 60s. And and you can, you know, and I had just come from two years at a really oppressive militaristic boarding school in Massachusetts where I was, you know, had to learn how to fight. I was bullied. There was anti Semitism. I happened to be Jewish. And it's like, where the hell am I? And how did I get here? And get me out of here. I was like miserable for two years of utter hell. And then I arrived in Berkeley and the sun is shining and, uh, you know, and everybody was into free love. and you know, and sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And so I was very interested in diving into all three. Um, and that's what I did. But, and it, but for me, you know, it went from psychedelics, which were considered good drugs, and I still consider them good drugs. I mean, there's a lot of value in exploring yourself in the universe. And if you can do that productively through psychedelics, then go for it. But I started getting into heroin because some of my good friends were using heroin and I wanted to be a bad boy anyway, as Andrew also mentioned, uh, defying the internal parent. Yeah, those people who sent me to that school. <laughs> uh, I, was all, I was into being a bad boy and I certainly succeeded. I got into heroin and I kept doing opiates of various kinds. I went to India, I smoked opium fairly regularly, I swallowed it, I got heroin and... Uh, Laos and uh, stuffed it into my tetracycline capsules and took it with me and uh, got back to the North America, ended up in Toronto, got into pharmaceutical opiates, was back in school um, studying psychology and down in the rat labs at night. It was just me and the rats. And uh, it so happened that when I opened the fridge for all the little things that we gave to the rats that included a lot of morphine. <laughs> And when I get, went through all that, I found the jars of powdered morphine, not liquid, but powdered morphine, in, in, a, in a lock cupboard, which I happened to find the key of, like peanut butter sized jars full of morphine sulfate powder. <laughs> so that kept me going for quite a while. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, it was fun. And at the same time, I was reading Anne Rice novels, anyone, right? <laughs> So, so I was kind of into the horror, the dark, you know, here in the basement with the rats. And I, I, I kind of felt like a vampire. I came out at night. It was, it, you know, but then, of course, I went home. And my, my wife, I was newly married. She was very unhappy with that. And our marriage did not last very long. Uh, and then I started getting into all kinds of trouble. And I got into grad school in psychology. And that took a lot of effort. And then... I got into stealing drugs from medical centers, which in those days wasn't that difficult because they didn't have so many motion detectors and things. <laughs> and, and, and there was a lot of like uh, opiates in, in, in those days. You could like vials of, of uh, meperidine, of uh, Demerol and stuff and lots of oxycodone. And uh, so I started to learn how to help myself. I became a cat burglar. Again, there was kind of a thrill <laughs> and excitement, Robin Hood kind of, you know, stealing from the rich and giving to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, and of course I got busted and it got to the point where it was so bad that I was almost like waiting to get busted um, got, got convicted I was in Thunder Bay I was told by my lawyer that I better get character references from everybody I knew if I wanted to stay out of jail which I, I did want to stay out of jail and uh, <laughs> um, but my character references happened to be all my professors in grad school at Windsor, and so they gave me good character references, but then, you know, once I got out on probation, uh, they said, you don't think you're coming back here, do you? I said, oh, so that's how you feel about it, huh? Said, yeah, you know, we're a, a psychology program. We don't expect our students to be out there stealing drugs at night. So yeah, I see your point. Uh, <laughs> so I, I was kicked out of school, Went, went back to the bottom of the food chain, uh, painting, washing windows, uh, selling posters, and, and stuff like that. I was actually selling posters at, at a university where I wouldn't be permitted to be a student because of my criminal activities. It was pretty wild. And then I gradually um, got really sick of it, like really sick of it. Got busted again, tried for years to quit. It was very, I, I was really, you know, strung out psychologically. Physically only for like sometimes a week or two at a time. 
It was all psychological, um, as it is for everybody. To me, addiction is all psychological. It's I, we can talk about substance um, dependence. We can talk about physiological dependence, and of course, with opioids, they interlap, they overlap, and that's a very serious issue. But cocaine and you know and, and uh, uh, methamphetamine and many other drugs don't give you withdrawal symptoms, don't produce a, a physiological dependency, but they are highly addictive. So right off the cuff, I want to separate the psychological aspects, which is what I call addiction, from the physical dependencies, which people really focus on a lot and confuse overwhelmingly because of the uh, uh, high visibility of the opioid crisis here in the U.S. especially. Anyway, finally quit and got into Tai Chi at night in the park and finally got back into grad school and did really well and got into psychotherapy, which had never worked before. I tried, but it didn't work. But I finally found therapists that uh, I connected with and um, did really well in grad school. And I thought, wow, okay, I'm really good at something else besides stealing drugs. <laughs> and got a PhD and got a job as a professor and became a professor for years and years. And then I got back into... I got into neuroscience and I really wanted to write about the, I wanted to write books in which the brain played an active part in the drama, in which the brain was kind of a character in the story. And I thought, how am I gonna do that? And my wife, at the time, another wife, uh, said, uh, we're still together, it's been 22 years. Um, and uh, uh, she said, well, why don't you write about the days of your addiction? That's a good story. And I said, yeah, that's what I'll do. So that's, I got into it almost by accident. I thought, okay, and I found my piles of journals that I'd filled up with horror stories from those days and got into those journals and wrote an autobiography that, and then included what I could glean about the neuroscience of addiction from really perusing the literature very carefully. I never myself studied uh, addiction in the lab. I got what I got from, from, under, from the literature, which I knew how to read, you know, neuroscience literature. So I put it all together in my writings. And now I talk about it. I'm, I'm also seeing addicts now in psychotherapy, uh, online psychotherapy, and I'm really getting a lot out of that. I've been blogging and connecting with people in addiction for years. Uh, now I'm also doing um, psychological treatment. I was trained as a clinical psychologist as well as a researcher and so I kind of know the basics. Like Andrew, I've got some one foot in the psychodynamic camp. Like Andrew, I don't think psychoanalytic style insight therapy is enough at all, but it's certainly a big part of what you need to do. You need to help people understand themselves uh, and then you need to help them figure out what to do with that. So um, that's, that's where I've come from. Uh, by the way, I do use the word addict sometimes because I'm just used to it, and obviously I don't mean it in a demeaning way because I was one, I, and I use it also, past tense, I was one. I don't say I'm in recovery. I say I was an addict. I also was a student. I also, you know, was a teenager, right? I was even a sitar player, but I no longer am. So I, that's, to me, that's not a problem uh, linguistically.